Alright, let's check that I'm actually recording. Recording, hey. Okay. Alright guys, so in this video I have created a uh, blend shape, a post-based blend shape. And you guys know how to do those now, because we've had a couple of lectures on that, both on the arms and legs. So let's try and just have a look at that, see the angle on the elbow is looking good. And now what I've done is I've created another blend shape for the hand here. And on frame 30 that should be activated like so. Uh, so what I've done here is I've just gone ahead and just bulged out that, you know, it's always problematic when you have something that has to bend 90 degrees and actually bulge outwards instead of inwards. So that's why I just kind of gave that a little bit of volume, added that. I could have spent more time on the blend shape, but I think like for the this uh, illustration, I think it's actually going to be totally fine. So what I'm going to show you is that there is an issue with activating blend shape specifically on ball joints. And the problem becomes when, you know, you start rotating your hand in crazy directions and all this stuff uh, it's okay with like an angle like the elbow because we only rotate in one angle but with the hand where i'm sort of like rotating the controller into tons of directions you know uh, this rotation of uh, rotation set is no longer great to use because you can see as soon as i just rotate one angle i rotate a ton of angles so i kind of want to create some kind of tool oh, and i have this update issue with my character here so what I kind of want to do is I want to um, I want to figure out how I can activate activate that blend shape without um, without actually using any of my joints to activate it as I've done in the other uh, setups. So what I've gone on and done here is uh, I made a video earlier about how this works, but I think it wasn't too clear, so I made it again where it should be a little bit clearer. So what I'll do here is I'll show you how we measure angles properly. So as you can see here, I have um, I have three locators and they're all in one hierarchy and no matter where this look uh, hierarchy lands these two are already always in 90 degrees because they're underneath the same parent right these two red dots here always under, under the same if i move this around it doesn't matter if i take it up or down or underneath you know there's always going to be an angle relationship between these two locators right it doesn't matter if i'm sure if it's short or if it's long here there's always some kind of angle measurement. So if I take that and V that uh, hit down V and put it into the into the position of the parent here, I just put that up there again. It doesn't matter. Like it's the angle that we're measuring. So it doesn't matter if this is tall or if it's low. Like the angle remains true, right? And let's keep that in mind while we do this. So <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll show you how to we can measure that angle and use it to activate our blend shape. So I'll take these two guys here. And I'll go in and I'll go into the node editor. And inside our node editor, we're gonna clean that up first and then we're gonna just add those two. So I'll just take these two transform nodes, I'll select the shape nodes, and I'll hit this little minus here to get rid of them out of my I'm not deleting them, I'm just removing it out of this out of this window. So I have these two locators and Maya can actually uh, figure out through this uh, through an angle between node, which is a node a native node to Maya. So if I say Maya, oh sorry. <laughs> Uh, angle between so I'll go down and I'll hit enter on that one and then I'll take these two and I'll put them I'll put the translation you know the position in the world of this front vector you know this one here I'll take the position of that and say put that into the vector one and it doesn't matter which one is which you can take it uh, you can take either they can both be one or two it doesn't matter so but as long as it's the translation because we need to know where this is existing in space compared to its parent and I don't need to tell this angle between node where the actual parent it's is I can just uh, it already figures that out because it's measuring between these two right so if I just want to illustrate how that works I'll just gonna I'm just gonna add um, the angle between uh, on on this one for instance so I'll just add an attribute and say uh, angle between and I don't need to give it a value here in minimum or maximum. I want to keep it a float because I want to keep that open. So you can see I press add here and I click close. And then I have like an attribute that's at this moment not doing anything. But what I do want to do is that I want to see that angle, right? So I'll take that angle here and from that angle between node, I'll control click and I'll middle mouse click and I'll drag and drop that onto back onto the up vector. Where I just want to display that angle. So I say the show on the left output, so it's shown on keyboard. Then I say the axis and I say angle. And I go down to, I'll show like non-keyables here because I don't need to see those. I'll tap that into the angle between 
which is the attribute I created here, right? And you can see that that immediately creates um, a hierarchy. I don't know what's up with the new node editor. It moves stuff over here around, creates a unit conversion. That's okay. At least it's actually making our hierarchy a little bit clear. So you can see I feed in the position of these two, and what it gives me back is uh, the actual angle between these two objects, right? <clears throat> so what happens now is that if I move this one around, you can actually see that now I'm actually measuring that angle, no matter where I am, it always measures. And if I actually snap that to my other, you can see it's zero because there is no angle anymore. Funny enough, <laughs> I can actually move that. Ah, oh, I hit on the actual snap up here. That's why I could move it. You can see like no matter where I move it, it's constantly showing me that measurement. So now there's 45 degrees between them. If I move it over here, there's 44. That's okay. So I think that's pretty healthy. So I'll snap that back into my origin and put that here. So now we want to figure out how we can make this um, angle basically control our um, our blend shape. Because no matter where I put this, you know, the angle between these two remains 90 all the time as long as I'm not moving these locators. But as soon as I move this locator, it's going to start showing me that actual angle between, which is great because that's a lot more steady than using a gimbaled, um, a gimbaled uh, joint. So I'll take this little hierarchy here, I'll close down these guys for now. And I'll take this little hierarchy here and I'll just move that up to the hand. So if I select my hand joint here, which is my hand uh, blend chain, and I hit control one to isolate that. So I select the root in the outliner and I hold down V, middle mouse click onto my joint, or to, sorry, to my hand joint here. And then I'll hit control one, because now it's there, right? And I can see I have my little hierarchy. I can hide my geometry for a second here. So this whole little hierarchy is now here, right? Um, and what I want to do is I kind of want to make sure that when my hand is rotating, this locator is following, right? So it goes down here, so the angle becomes bigger. But also, when my hand is rotating upwards, these, this is going to get closer and therefore create a zero value and I can use that value to activate my blend shape, right? So, um, what we should do is I cannot break this hierarchy, right? Because the hierarchy is needed to give me that angle because this angle between is looking for the parent of these two guys, which is the root joint. So if I take them out of the hierarchy, that hierarchy is broken. But what you can do if you don't want to break a physical hierarchy is that you can break the hierarchy with a parent constraint, right? We know that from other videos. So we can ruin that relationship between these uh, by going in and selecting the L arm blend, which is our hand joint, right? And uh, we can take the front vector and constrain that. So if I constrain that with a parent constraint, the hierarchy remains true in here. However, uh, it's actually, it's broken up because our hand is no longer, our, our locator is no longer following the world, which is this root, right? It's no longer following this root. We can see it stands still. It's following the hand rotation now. And it's okay to use this hand joint. I wouldn't use, for instance, my IK handle for this because if I use my IK handle, it wouldn't work when I'm in FK. So keep in mind that you gotta use it on something that's um, that's activated if you're either on your, either on IK or FK. So that's why I hook it up to my blend chain because that's following both. So right now I hook that up. And then the next thing I wanna do is figure out where can I actually uh, make these two follow because they just need to remain this uh, straight line here. So I am gonna put that to my blend chain B, which is this one here, right? So that's the upper hierarchy. And I'm just gonna constrain that root joint here. So I'm gonna say constrain, parent constraint. And now you can see as soon as I start blending, bending my F or IK hand, that's working fine. And the angle here is increasing and decreasing. And if I move it up here, let's say to the 90 degree or something close, if I select that here, you see the angle is actually getting really low. So now we can start using that angle for something. So if I set this one back, so I can actually just roll my timeline here because I already set that key for me. Uh, but what I want to do now is start using that angle between node uh, for uh, activating my blend shape. So if I, I don't know why it's keep on doing this, it's quite annoying. I think that's been a problem for Maya for a while, but let's see what's this stuff here. Okay, let's just hide, not hide that, but get rid of this one so I'll take that out of my hierarchy here zoom in on these guys so I have that angle between node here and I want to use that so I'm gonna create a remap value because I want to remap the value of this measurement and the remap value works as I'm gonna take this angle between and put the angle like we did before 
and put that into the input value. And you can see inside the input value, there is a 90 degree right now because our hand is not rotated. And it's okay to start from 90 because that's why we're using the 90, uh, the remap value. And you can see here, I'm gonna say there's an input of maximum 90. I don't want, I don't want my, I want my blend shift to be off as soon as we're 90. So my input maximum should be 90, right? And my input minimum value is there, you know, when it goes all the way up to frame 30. I have that here somewhere. I think that's frame 30. Just gonna move that up. Yeah, that's frame 30. Where my hand is in 90 degrees, you can see. And also that value becomes zero because there's zero degrees between these two now. So I say like the minimum value is zero. And then I say like once it's in zero, the output should be one. And once it's in 90, the output should be zero, right? Because when it's down, I don't want my blend shape to be activated. When it's up, I want my blend shape to be activated. So the output right now, when the, up, when the input value is zero, is the input zero. And then the output minimum is one. So I can take this one now and go into my blend shape or my shape editor and then I can right click on my actual blend shape here and select that. Then I can take that and add it into my hierarchy here. You can see I get my blend shape here on my blend shape node. And I can take this remap value and drag and drop it onto my body blend here. Take the out value of that into the weight and into the wrist rotation. And let's try and see if we can get to see our character here. So I'm just gonna go up and unhide my character underneath the geometry. So it's not the full body, we know that. It's actually the body geo here. And you can see the blend shape is activated right now. And as soon as I scrub my tie line, you see here, it's actually taking that on and off. So the blend shape is working perfectly for us. And you can also see inside the uh, shape editor how it's reacting to that rotation, right? So that's how we make a proper uh, rotation. What I'll do now is uh, I'll go in and just start renaming uh, these objects here because I, I don't want them to be called uh, up, uh, root up and all this stuff because I'm going to have these a lot of places in my uh, rig. So what I will do is I'll go in and call this one for uh, L wrist root lock and probably call this something like L wrist front lock and this one could be L up lock. And then inside my node editor here, I wanna call this a L wrist up angle. A angle between, a GB maybe angle between, something like that. And uh, is there anything else I need to, oh yeah, so I got this one, so I can say L wrist up angle remap value. And now everything is named. I need to get this back into my hierarchy. So this is L wrist angle between or angle group. I don't want to call it angle between, it's too long. So angle group. And since uh, everything that's actually inside this, except for these curves, we don't really need these curves, but right now I'm just going to keep them. It was more like for the visual representation. Uh, I'm just going to parent that into my hierarchy and I could just parent that underneath my hand joint because everything that's in here is already constrained so it doesn't really matter where I put it. Uh, but yeah, now you can see that as soon as I put that hand up there, it's actually uh, activating beautifully. So yeah, that's the end of the angle between uh, uh, lecture and how to activate a blend shape based on only one angle. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do that for the other side. And I suggest that you guys uh, get on with your blend shapes as well, because um, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff. What you should do is go through your character and try and move stuff around and uh, make a list of the things you do and figure out what's the low hanging fruit and then catch that first. Uh, and then uh, try and figure out where the more hardcore stuff is and make a time schedule to make all those blends. So yeah, that's the end of this uh, lecture. So I'll see you in the next one.